and 20 variations of I each like it. sword. Yeah. So I think we can make the next you know, World of Warcraft or MMO. What do you think? I, I think we've got it. But uh, hold on. Let's type in our uh, capacity per day. How, okay. how much do you think you can work on this per day? Pretty busy at this point, so I've got maybe an hour, hour and a half at most. You've day. got one hour per day. Uh, how, what, what kind of activities can you do this on? Can you do the deployments? Can you do the design, the development? Are you going to document it for us? You know what? Uh, I'm not much of a writer, so maybe I'll just do the development. I, I like to we'll just do the, the development. Pro, okay, so we'll mark you down for development. Okay, how many days off are you going to take next week? Well, I'm a Monday through Friday guy, so uh, yeah, let's do five days. I'll do two days off. You'll do two days off. So we'll mark you for Thursday, and we'll mark you for Friday too. Okay, so that means uh, during the entire sprint, you can do six hours worth of work. So... I'm not making the next wow. Yeah, how are you feeling about World of Warcraft these days? Um, yeah, maybe I'm getting a little ambitious here. Yeah, let's take a look. So, voils I added into this project just for a showcase. You can take a look at our actual allocations of the two people on the team. I am allocated at exactly eight out of eight hours for the rest of this sprint. So you're kind of maxed out at this point. I'm uh, I'm right on par with what I should be. Uh, my buddy Ruman, though, I guess he was thinking that we would build a nice big MMO yeah. for us. So He's kind of uh, picking up from my slack. Yeah, 13 hours out of four hours available. I don't think he's getting that done anymore. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think our next meeting on Monday, we're going to take a look at either hiring somebody else. Or cut back a little bit. Probably cut a few features. That might actually end up happening. I like that it's color-coded in red on the right-hand side, too. Yeah, this says, oh, no, you've done something wrong. You need yep. to go and look at your uh, work <laughs> allocation. So, like I say, in project management built into Visual Studio Online, yeah. absolutely fantastic for getting an idea of how much work you actually can do as well as tracking that work. Yeah. Um, and like you said before, it scales very well because you're at you know Fortune 100 companies with 200 plus or 2,000 people on a team. Oh. We have a team now of just four people, and this is this tool is equally as practical then. Exactly. It's uh, it's exactly what we use in the enterprise: big projects, small projects. I do this for personal projects. Um, you know, there's a guy named Brian Harry. I don't know if you guys know him, but I was talking to him on uh, email one day, and he said he runs his farm with this thing. <laughs> so uh, he's it's got not just for technology. Then it's not just for technology. You can manage just about anything. I mean, it's a great just project management tool that just happens to have a lot of really good software-specific features to it. Okay, and this is a built-in or an added feature of uh, BizSpark as well. Yeah, so uh, that tool is completely free to use also. So uh, you just need a live ID. You go and log on with your live ID. If okay. you're uh, an enterprise customer, you can use your domain credentials as well. I know at Microsoft we have our own projects that we do, and um, I have I use my domain credentials to log into our own TFS. So, as do I. Yeah, it's, uh, and we do it on Visual Studio Online for some of these too. Um, so I think we've covered quite a bit about uh, project management. I think uh, what a lot of people out there want to know, though, is uh, source control. Yeah. What are we going to do about source control? Um, so what, what, what is source control? I hear this term all the time, especially used by programmers, and I'm just so confused by it. Source control, uh, well, I'll tell you one thing. It's not just making a zip file on a thumb drive and sharing it around the office. So you're um, saying like my Dropbox or SkyDrive, those are not source control? No, that is not source control. You can't right-click and view the history. You can't undo your changes. Um, you can't branch. You can't merge. There's so many features that are just missing out of a solution like that that... Uh, you're just missing out on a lot of stuff. And we'll go into some more on the whys as well. Um, but it really boils down to, I'm going to make a change in my game. You know, maybe my character needs to have a um, sword and seven axe, you know. Mm -hmm. Axes are out. Swords are in. It's time to really just do... Uh, what did I say? Axes or swords? I don't know. Torches. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why we, that's the good thing about having source controls. We can just take a look at what we did before, go back, and view it there. Exactly. So um, when we make that mistake, we need to go back and make him use a sword, an axe, whatever it was. Okay. We can just right-click and revert changes, and voila, it's back in. So anything I did to break the game... I can just hit a button and goes back to oh, the yeah. working state again. Yeah, and there will be a lot of times when I've been working on Teams and somebody will check in some code that he didn't actually test. And um, yeah, it really breaks it. Or maybe they accidentally deleted a file, you know, maybe a uh, app config file or some sort of certificate that we generated and we do all of our authentication off of. And it's really hard to generate that back again. So what do you do? Well, 
if you use Dropbox or you're just passing around a zip file, now you gotta go see who has it, maybe yeah. rebuild a hard drive like somebody out there I know. Um, <laughs> But if you had source control, you can just go view your history and bring it back out into your current version. So it's uh, really important. Yeah, you um, know, the way I kind of always looked at it was um, like those choose your own adventure books where <laughs> you can choose to go this route or that route and it'll bring you down to another page. And I was one of those people who always kept my thumb on that last page, looked ahead and realized I made a mistake and went down the wrong path. I just flip my page back and I'm back at the right route. I never thought about it as a uh, choose your own adventure, but uh, <laughs> it certainly can be an adventure if you don't use source control. Yes. Um, so uh, what I say about source control is the rule number one of source control is use source control. Rule number two rule, the rule number two is to refer to rule number one. And rule number three is to force everybody at your company to also refer to rule number one. It is the most important thing okay. that you can possibly do when developing um, software. Uh, project management, definitely important, but if you lose your product, I mean, you're just... Yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah, you're in big trouble at <laughs> that point. Lost time, lost money, maybe an angry boss or some upset coworkers because wouldn't they know may what, be depending on you too. Wouldn't know what to tell my investors if I lost the product. Yeah. Um, so before we go into more about source control, I want to talk a little bit about some more Unity-specific things. Um, particularly, how do we integrate Unity with source control? Um, there's two really important things to talk about, and this image will demonstrate that. It's uh, visible meta files. Mm -hmm. um, these guys are important. The meta files can strike in all sorts of crazy ways. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to split off the import settings or Unity specific settings of uh, your prefabs and your scenes and your textures and your assets and things like scaling them up or down from your import, not necessarily the source file, but the import of those assets. So on your disk and in source control, it will exist one way, but in Unity it will exist in a slightly different way based off of how you imported it. And splitting these meta files will uh, allow those import settings to live side by side okay. with those assets. So let's say that I had one developer who uh, decided to change the source asset. He made it twice as big. Yeah. And then I had another developer who made it half as small from Unity. All right. Uh, well, at the end of the day, it's going to be exactly the same size. <laughs> <laughs> so um, having these mi uh, visible meta files will be really nice for... Uh, merging things together. So if I modify a scene and somebody else modifies a scene or we both modify import settings, we can go and we can see who did what mm -hmm. um, and it's not stored in the same file. Um, previously it was in the library folder, I believe. Okay. Well, I have a page on that. I always have to refer to it anyways. You guys will have, probably have to do the same thing too. Um, here you go. So what do I check in? Uh, this is probably the one of the most important lists that you can have if you're going to be doing source control. Yeah. Um, at your root folder, you're going to have mostly auto-generated stuff, your CS proj files, other kinds of things that you just won't check in. Um, you'll ignore your library folder if you split your meta files. Um, that's going to be a local cache of your assets at this point. Okay. Um, your temp file folder is going to be all temporary stuff. The uh, important things to check in are going to be your assets and your project settings. Your assets are going to be everything that's specific to your game. It's going to be your scenes. It's going to be your... Uh, your art, your music. Your code, yeah, yep. exactly. And so, your project settings will be your physics and your input settings as well. So right now it seems like we're, it's all about um, keeping file size and clutter down uh, to a manageable point. Yeah, uh, you want to keep all that down, but most importantly, what you check in, you want to make sure that... It's something that somebody else on your team can go and they can pull the source control and they can use it. Or say that uh, I'm doing work on my, uh, my laptop and it gets run over by a bus. Okay. Um, I can go and I can pull that down and be back up and running um, from another box. So it sounds like we want to keep it stored locally, but at the same time keep it stored off in a cloud somewhere too. Yes. Um, and that's kind of where we're going to get to the couple of different options. And this can get into a huge debate. This is debate. like very much a, a holy war of... of oh, yes. <laughs> this is the holy war of version control. It's Git versus TFS. Um, and uh, we kind of chose us two to do this presentation yeah. because I'm very much a TFS version control. I, uh, I love centralized uh, control. I think it's easier to understand. Uh, they're both fully supported in Visual Studio, but it's really that... 
easy to understand uh, for me that I like. Um, I like the branching model. Yep. I like that it lives in one place on the cloud and it isn't, nobody else can mess with it. It's just there and uh, I can control the permissions the way that I like. Yep. And it's just, it's just familiar for me. So it's basically like the, the large entire project is kept together in one spot. Yeah, so I'm not very good with the uh, whole Git thing. I tried to look at it once, and um, it just confused me uh, beyond all belief. So I'm going to kind of defer this portion <laughs> of the conversation to our resident expert sure, over here. Sure, sure. Uh, so Git is an alternative means of source control. Um, it really started growing popularity in the last couple of years with something like um, um, uh, GitHub, where people can publicly host and share their files. So the idea behind Git is that you don't need to check out the entire project, but instead just different parts. And along the way, you can add small specific features. So if we're working on um, our game, I can then uh, make a copy of this project and branch off of my main tree, and I might add feature like um, new inputs. So alternative controls for uh, maybe connect. And this way I can make all the changes I want without ever, ever affecting anything in the center, so you guys can continue to build your project, and it works just the same. Then once we've all tested it and make sure it's working okay, I can then send a message back to you to say, hey, this works, I've tried it out, so why don't you push this back into your main project? And it's doing a, a merge, we'll call it. Exactly, and uh, in Team Foundation server version control, what you'll do if you want to create a feature branch and you have something that you want other people to kind of look at that's separate from the main workflow, you can create a branch, but that branch will live on a central location. So everybody will be working off of the same one. You don't yes. have this idea of a distributed version control like Git is. Uh, Git is going to be everybody has their own version of the repository, a full version, but you'll also have a master location. Yes. And um, that's kind of, that's the part that confuses me. I'm not very good with that portion, but, you know, it turns into that uh, battle and we could duke it out forever. Um, but just know that with uh, Team Foundation Server, it's Team Foundation Server, not TFS version control, not Git version control, but you have those two options. They're both fully supported yes. from the UI and you get a uh, GUI, so you don't have to use the command line tool. So if you liked Git, uh, Team Foundation Server now has some really really good tools for you Absolutely. to use from within the GUI. And I believe we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Um, so, you know, one of the next questions that we get is, okay, I've got Team Foundation Server, um, I've picked my project type, I've picked my uh, version control strategy, now I need to actually connect to it and I need to uh, do my actual check-in. So, um, the first thing you really need is you need to have, go to visualstudio.com, um, you get for free, you can have up to five people using it, um, and you can kind of rotate who's using it. So as I have people come on and off of my game development projects, okay. I'll uh, remove their permissions and then I'll give it to somebody else. So sometimes, you know, you bring on somebody and they're not really doing anything, and then you can have uh, take away their permissions and allocate that to somebody else. Okay. Um, then you're going to need to download Visual Studio. You can either get Express free or Pro trial. You can get the trial or you can pay. Um, and it's, here's the link for you. We'll make these slides available. I'm not sure when. Um, and then inside of Visual Studio, you'll go to Team, Connect to Team Foundation Server. Um, and then you'll enter the visualstudio.com project URL. And we're going to go ahead and do a quick demo of what version control looks like. So the first thing we're going to take a look at while doing this is the project structure in Unity that we alluded to earlier. Okay. So you can see we have these assets, these build process templates. This is something that uh, TFS version control is going to bring into. Um, uh oh, I am not zooming the way I had wanted to. There we go. Okay, so we've got the assets. The build process templates is something that Team Foundation Server is going to bring into. We're not really going to talk about that a lot today. The library folder, the project settings folder, this TF ignore is uh, mm. pretty essential. This is something that you can use to ignore um, files. So if we uh, let's actually take a look at this, we can open this in uh, Notepad. Yeah, it essentially looks like a, a, a text file. 
Yeah, it's basically a text file, and it's going to tell you, here's some of the files that I've decided to ignore. Yep. Um, so you can see I'm ignoring the temp folder. I'm ignoring the library folder. At the root level, I'm ignoring pretty much every CS proj file. I'm ignoring the solution files. These are all things that are going to get auto-generated. If I check these in, and uh, Mr. Voiles over here decides to pull down the code, yeah. he's going to get a lot of stuff that's specific to me and my workflow and my environment. I want him to be able to 